Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Thank you so much for joining me for another planty video. Today we're going to be doing my July favorites, which is very exciting. Always love doing favorites videos. And I have, <laughs> I'm like surrounded by all of the plants that I picked. I normally try to pick five, but I have eight or wait, maybe nine. I have like a bonus one that's not here that I might show. Honestly, July has been the month where my plants have had the biggest growth spurt and I think that that is partially due to it finally being warm. It's actually like too warm right now, heat wave vibes, but my house isn't like too cooking or anything. So they're quite happy. Most of them are quite happy with the temperature lately. Yeah, there's just been so many new leaves. It has been such a joy watching them all grow so much. I also want to say a huge, huge thank you for all of the kind comments that you left on my last video and all the messages that you guys have sent me. I'm feeling all of the love and all of the support and I'm honestly just like so grateful. I know that I don't know most of you personally, but just reading those messages and feeling so supportive truly helps me a lot, so thank you. Anyways, yeah, I've been feeling a lot better this week, so I'm super grateful for that. Um, let's just hop into my favorite plants. Okay, I don't even know which plant to start with. There's so many, but maybe I will start with the one that is right beside me. I am so obsessed with this, you guys. So this is my Emedrium Medium Silver, and this is the new leaf that I got. This like unfurled probably about a week ago. It's like just finishing hardening off. And this is the first leaf that this plant has given me outside of the cabinet, which is really cool. I actually have a whole video about how I care for this plant. But yeah, it's so happy, doing super well. And this is just like massive, like literally, look at this compared to my face. I'm just so glad that this plant is so happy and doing so well. Oh my, oh. I just noticed that there's another one on the second vine. Oh, that really just snuck out on me. Does that ever happen to you guys where you don't even notice a leaf emerging and then all of a sudden it's just there? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. That is so exciting. Okay, so as you can see, I have two main vines. So this like, one that goes higher up here is the larger one. We have these, there's a few leaves on that one. And then this is the secondary vine. So it has, this is the oldest or one of the oldest leaves. And then this, and then the new one that is gonna come out right there. That is so cool. So yeah, this plant is definitely happy. This um, sits in front of my south facing window, but gets indirect light. Uh, it's on top of my Millsbow wide in my living room. If you know the orientation of my space here. Loves climbing the moss pole, that's very important. And yeah, I find it a super easy plant to grow, honestly. I was saying in my Discord chat the other day that I love this plant because it has like the traits of philodendron and monstera that I really like, like the same growth pattern and same like type of leaves, but it's just a little bit different. Like it's just fun to grow something that's like not philodendron or monstera, you know what I mean? Because obviously I love those, they're some of my favorite plants, but um, it's just nice to have something different. So yeah, definitely recommend if you like this type of like climbing, like fenestrated, really t cool textured type of plant as well. Wow, I can't believe that new leaf just like popped out. That's so wild. Okay, whew, okay. Next, I am going to hop right into talking about my Alocasia uh, Michelitziana. So this is commonly referred to as Alocasia Friedex. So uh, sometimes I get comments about that. Alocasia Friedex is actually the variegated version of this plant, but this is like commonly referred to and labeled as um, Alocasia Friedex. So I'm not someone who's like fussy about that. Like I know what people are talking about when they say Alocasia Friedex, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, mine is, oh my goodness, she is huge. Like really, really getting huge. This thing has so many leaves. They just keep coming out. Um, this thing is honestly pretty much always putting out a new leaf. This is one that just came out there. It's like just unfurling. And it is getting some really big ones too. Like look at the size of this one. That's like quite massive Look compared to my hand. And this one is pretty big as well. Wow, like look at that, it is so pretty. 
this is an alopecia that I grew from being a tiny, tiny baby. So it's just so crazy to see it get so large now and these can get much larger. Um, so we'll see what happens in the future. But yeah, I find this a super easy plant to grow. I've never had any issues with it, like literally ever. It will droop and drop leaves eventually, like pretty much all alopecia do that. So these ones just like hang down here and then eventually they'll yellow. But it gets so much new growth that it's still just like so full and gorgeous. I don't even mind. This lives in my bedroom, doesn't live in like a cabinet, just in regular household conditions, except it does get light from my Soltec Solutions um, grow light, which I'm absolutely loving by the way. And my plants are absolutely loving it as well, especially this guy. He's not like right under it, but he still does get a fair amount of light from it. So yeah, he's just honestly like living his best life. I feel like this adds so much to my bedroom, gives it such a jungle vibe and really just like fills out a decent space. So yeah, I admire this plant all the time. I just love it so much. Alocasia are kind of nice too. Like once you, once they get going and they like mature a bit and they're just like easy to care for, then you don't really have to do anything to them. Like you don't have to worry about moss poles or any of that. Like I just find them to be really chill. I've never even had a pest on this one, knock on wood. I don't think that alocasia are as hard as people make them out to be once you have it established. Okay, next we have a philodendron. The first philodendron of my favorites. Of course, I have a few because y'all know I love philodendron. But the first one that I'm gonna talk about is my philodendron gloriosum. And I have just been so, whoop, oh my goodness, this is a heavy planter. I have just been so excited about this plant lately after it gave me this new leaf. This has been out for probably a couple of weeks now, but this is the largest and just like most beautiful leaf I've ever gotten on a Gloriosum. So I'm very proud of this. I've been admiring it so much. Um, yeah, I just really love it. I also grew this from being like a little, like literally this big, you guys, like little tiny baby. So it's just so cool to watch it grow larger and mature. And as you can see, we actually have a new leaf on the way, which is so crazy. Like, look at that. It looks like it's gonna be another big one. I have been having a lot of fun growing crawlers recently, actually. Well, I only have a couple. Um, I have my philodendron mcdowell but that's doing really well recently honestly that's another one that i've really been loving lately i have my gloriosum and then now i have philodendron mame which i don't have like it's not really crawling yet i need to pot that plant up i'm treating it for spider mites right now but again it's just nice to not have to worry about moss poles or about like helping it climb or anything like that but you're still it's still sizing up and you're still getting those large full philodendron leaves so it's just like a different experience and it's really cool this gal is getting some yellowing leaves which they're just the older ones so i think it's just like normal yellowing i can take this one off now it's like completely yellow is it gonna come off oh yeah there we go bye bye yeah, I really don't do anything special for her. She, well, I guess I do because she lives in the um, Millsbow wide cabinet. So she is in like greenhouse conditions, but yeah, she, she's living her best life. Ooh, getting that philodendron smell from breaking that leaf off. Okay, next I'm gonna talk about one that I haven't shown in a while. I did haul this uh, probably like a few months ago now from Plant Haven Toronto, and it is my silver dollar vine. I cannot believe how much this thing has grown, you guys. I had it kind of like behind my blind and it was growing up along my window. And then I like pulled it out to water it the other day and this huge thing fell out. And I was just like, oh my gosh, it's getting massive. Honest, it's honestly just like grown like a beast. It's been so easy to care for and it's just so cute. Like those little round leaves, are you kidding me? I am obsessed. That's like a new vine here as well. And then all of this. I don't need, look at all these like curly, curly cues that it has. Like, are these roots? They look so weird. They like don't look like normal aerial roots. Do you see those? There's so many of them. I know that these like to be trellised, they like to climb, but I don't know, I kind of just like love the vibe of it hanging. Like, is it okay if I just let it trail or will it not be happy? Do I have to trellis it? Honestly, I don't really know much about this plant. I've just been going with the flow with it and I don't know, it's been doing great. 
I just watered it last night, but yeah, this really looks like a Hoya to me. It lives in a south facing window that is kind of like covered so it doesn't get a like a ton of direct sun but it does get some oh my gosh the little like new growth on the tip literally so cute they come in as like the tiniest little leaves and they then they expand into these big circular ones i want to repot this i think that this would look so cool in terracotta with the kind of like silvery foliage but i don't know if i if i can I'll leave it trailing then i will pot it into terracotta but well actually i could pot it into terracotta either way and just put a trellis in let me know what you think i should do with this plant if you have one i would love to see or hear how you grow it so leave a comment down below i just think that this is going to be such a cool vibe once it gets to be like a really large full plant and it seems to be a really fast grower so yeah i have just been really into this guy lately Okay, and next I do have a Hoya. I have a couple Hoya on this list today. And this is one that I just have not shown in a very long time because I had to completely chop the whole thing. I only saved one cutting and now it is finally growing back, my friends. Yes, it is indeed Miss Polynira. Um, so she's turning into a full plant again and I am so, so happy about it. I just, this is the plant that the whole like thrip Thripocalypse started with in last September. Yeah, this is the first plant that I found thrips on. It got quite destroyed. And yeah, like I said, I had to take a cutting, root that, grow this back. And I'm just so thankful that, you know, I was able to save a piece of her. I find that the Polynera grows pretty fast, so I think that I'm gonna have a full plant again in no time. This is just such a pretty Hoya. Um, not even like, like obviously the shape of the leaves is really unique and beautiful and what draws people to this plant, but I just love the way that they like drape down. Like it's just like so elegant looking. It's so pretty, like really different than most Hoya. I know that these are kind of mainstream now, but yeah, I just, I really appreciate mine, especially since I almost lost her, you know? Makes the heart grow fonder. In one of my plants that I dislike video, I had said that I, or not plants that I dislike, plants that I like didn't get the hype for, like wouldn't get or something. I don't even remember what I called that video, but I had said in a video that I did not understand the hype on like the variegated version and that I don't think I would ever get it. Like I didn't want it, wasn't interested, didn't really like the way it looks, but now y'all, I think I do want it. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna get it anytime soon. Like that's not really an attainable plant right now, but um, I have changed my mind. I really like it and yeah, team Polynera of all varieties. Okay, and then next, this has been like my top favorite plant lately. I mean, it's hard to choose just like one to be the top favorite, but if I had to, it might be this one. This is, of course, my philodendron verrucosum, my baby. I love this philodendron so much. It's ridiculous. In my opinion, this just has like all of the cool traits of philodendron. It has hairy petioles, if you can see. Um, it has hairy petioles. It has an incredible, like cool leaf shape. Oh, oh my gosh, can you imagine if I dropped it? Um, it has beautiful backs. Look at that. The red. I'm dying. Look at this new leaf coming in. I literally can hardly handle this plant. It is so pretty. Um, they, they come in a lot of different varieties, like different um, colorations and different looks. It's fast growing. It's pretty easy. I mean, yeah. I'm. Uh, is it the easiest philodendron in the world? No. But do I make it work? Yes. <laughs> It has like a kind of velvety look, but it's not like super delicate or sensitive like the Milano Chrysum or something like that. Easy to propagate. I could just, you know, this is like gonna turn into a Viracosum fan video here, but I'm just obsessed with it. I just think it's so unique. Like it just has so many cool traits in one plant. Like if you're wanting to get a cool philodendron and you can't decide which to get, if you're trying to like branch out into the more like uncommon, I mean, this isn't really uncommon anymore, but you know what I mean. If you're wanting to branch out a little bit, um, highly recommend just like looking into this one and trying it out. Maybe like do a swap for a cutting or buy a cutting or something like that. I started this out from a really tiny little baby plant and now I've gotten a ton of growth from it and I have a propagation going. Um, I actually have several vines in here, so I have so many new leaves coming in. Um, which ones are new? I'm, um, this one, I think, okay, see if I can show you. It's hard because I have to like hold the pole or else it's gonna fall over. I think that this is new and this is new. 
I think. Yeah, there was two new leaves coming in down here. Those look like the darkest, so I think that they're new. And then there is another one that is going to be coming out right there, if you can see, right there. So yeah, it's really fun to have multiple vines growing in your pots. Like I say all the time, I'm like a broken record when it comes to that, but it just really is. It just really, oh my gosh, there's a little baby one here too. Oh, are you serious? Are you serious? Look at this one coming in. I have like four or five, maybe five different vines growing in this. So there's just like new leaves all the time. So as you can see, this plant is at the top of the pole now and I am going to be chopping this. I can't really extend this pole any taller. I mean, if I took it out of the cabinet, I could, but I think I'm gonna chop it and start again from these larger leaves and see how big I can keep growing it. That's just gonna be like, yeah, that's gonna be the thing that I'm doing with a lot of my plants. Just chopping them once they get to the top and then starting over again with like a larger base leaf and then hopefully sizing up again and then just like keep keeping doing that, <laughs> if that makes any sense. But yeah, I've just been obsessed with this lately, like checking on it every single day and yeah, I'm loving the new leaves. I'm loving the size of the leaves. Just, just an amazing plant. Okay, next I have a Hoya to show you. This is like quickly becoming one of my top, top favorite Hoya. Uh, and I never thought that I would be saying this because I had this Hoya for a whole year and it did not give me a single leaf. So just from that, some of you probably know which one I'm talking about. And it is my Hoya chicken farm. So this plant, like I said, it literally did nothing for an entire year. And now within like the past month, I've gotten three new leaves. So this was the first one that it gave me as it's like first leaf to put out in my care and y'all when I tell you I was shook I I was not expecting the leaf to look like this. This is one of the prettiest Hoya leaves I've ever seen in my life. The variegation on it is like minty and then the background is like so dark and oh my gosh the size it's massive like everything about this leaf I am obsessed with. I love it. Um, the older ones are just kind of more like, I don't know, old and like not that variegated. So I just wasn't expecting the new leaf to be so pretty. That's an old one. So I got that new leaf and I was just over the moon, like so pumped about it. And then it started giving me two more leaves. Like, are you kidding? These are so cool. So um, they are still growing. They're still like in that super soft stage right now. So they're still expanding. They're still hardening off and doing their thing. They're still a little bit lighter colored right now. They look like they maybe got like some light damage on the tip, but it's kind of too early to tell. I'll find out once they harden off. But yeah, I just, this Hoya blows my mind. Like honestly, if you need a Hoya to go on your wish list, try to find the chicken farm. I could be wrong, but I don't think that these are very expensive. I'm not sure, this was gifted to me. I think that this came from Plant Haven Toronto. But yeah, anyways, I gave it this makeshift trellis after it put out that first leaf because I was like, oh my goodness, like we need to, we need to help her out now because I want to get more leaves. And then after I did that, I got these two. So yeah, it looks kind of janky, but I honestly don't care. So it's fine. She lives in my Ikea greenhouse cabinet. I have been using the orchid mist on her. I've also been using my DIY orchid mist a lot ever since I made that. It seems to be working well. It's kind of hard to like gauge, like for me to say like whether that works well or like as well as the original. Um, but in my opinion, like I think that it works really well maybe over more time, I'll be able to give you guys a better update. But yeah, I haven't, I, like all my Hoya are doing amazing. They're growing so much. Some of them are preparing to bloom right now. So I think that the DIY is like just as good. Anyways, yeah, that's what I've been using on it. And yeah, it's just doing super well. And I can't wait to get even more leaves on it. Okay, so I have one more philodendron to show you and then I'm gonna take you into my bedroom so that I can show you the like bonus one. I just can't move it out here. So I have to show you in there which I'm sure that gives away which plant it is because there's only one that I like can't really move easily. Anyways, the philodendron that I have been admiring so much lately in my bedroom is the philodendron Florida ghost. I just like, this plant is so pretty. This is honestly like the philodendron Florida ghost of my dreams because it is so minty. Like look at all the leaves, the like varying degrees of mintiness it is just so so pretty this is the newest leaf obviously and this one just has 
a much more mature, large leaf shape. And I was so excited to see that when it came out. This new leaf came out probably a couple weeks ago and it's already preparing to give another leaf. Like I can just kind of tell that something is gonna start happening there, you know? I think that I grew this from a wet stick. Um, my Florida Ghost was giving me, I've had both problems with my Florida Ghosts actually. I had one, my first one, would only give me like green leaves. It wouldn't really give me like the white ghost like leaf. I ended up selling that one. And then I got a new one that I saw and it had like really white new growth. So I was like, oh, like I want that one because my other one wouldn't do that. It was just giving me like green or like a lighter green or like, yeah, it just wasn't really what I wanted. So I got that one and then I had the opposite problem where it was the white leaves were just staying white and then they would just brown and die off. Like they wouldn't fade to the darker green. And I did everything. I moved it away from light. I just like, I really tried to remedy that situation and nothing really helped. So I ended up completely chopping it up. Um, I had a few cuttings from it. I ended up selling a couple when I moved. And then this is the one that I kept, which I think was a wet stick. These are like the original tiny, tiny leaves down here, which would have been from last summer. So it's been about a year. Um, and I think that this is like, you know, a pretty mature leaf to come from a wet stick in a year. I mean, for me, um, <laughs> fern standards here, y'all. She is in pawn and I, I had debated in the past taking her out of pawn, but now that I just see that she's so happy, I think I'm gonna leave her in pawn. Like I can probably repot her soon. She's very rooty in there. Um, yeah, doing really well. By the way, this sock thing is like the best thing that I've ever done because there's like zero algae in here. There's only a tiny bit of algae on the top because obviously that's not protected from the light. But yeah, that like saved my life because I was so over the algae situation on my pond plants. Anyways, yeah, I just think she's so pretty and I love her. Okay, and then the last one that I wanna talk about is of course my Monstera Dubia. I feel like I'm putting this plant in like every video, but it's one of my absolute favorites and I cannot get over how crazy this thing is, how fast it grows, how fun it is to grow. Like, oh my goodness, is she so underrated? I, I know I say that about a lot of plants, but like honestly, if you want to try out a shingling plant or if you want to try out a different type of monstera, get the dubia. It's so easy to grow and just like so fun to grow. So yeah, I posted a photo on Instagram yesterday of like how much she's grown. And then I actually decided to like lay, do like a growth chart. So that was July, that was June, and then May, which is crazy. And I figured out like where to put the labels by looking at old photos and like matching up the leaves. But um, if you look, like this is the growth between May and June. And this was like beginning of May to mid-June and I only got like two leaves out of that so it's just crazy to see how much the growth sped up between June and July like she is really just like taking off now and the size like this plant is massive now it's hard to like compare and show you the size but it's just like so crazy yeah it's been so fun to grow and then there is a secondary vine that is growing down there as well I did get some questions about what I am going to do once it reaches the top of the plank. It still has some ways to go, but I am going to be chopping and starting a new one. And I don't know what I'm going to do with like this one attached on the plank. Um, I might take it off and like chop it. I don't really know. Cause like, what am I supposed to do with that? Once I like cut the top off and start a new plant. I don't even know. I'm going to have to think about it, but yeah, I just, I'm obsessed. I know it's going to be so cool once she covers this part of the plank because then I can just like really see her like peeking out, you know, it's going to look so rad. Anyways, that is all of my favorite plants as of late. I hope that you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to give this fo this photo, this video, a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.